guys. This is your friend Daniel Kwame Pobi, JMT certified speaker, trainer, and coach. And I come to you on behalf of the Hiker team, bringing you Hiker's Leadership 360. This is where we talk everything leadership and discuss everything leadership. If you have not subscribed to our channel on YouTube yet, I encourage you to do that. Daniel Pobi, subscribe, click that bell button so you receive notification whenever we upload our videos and i want to welcome you you know that in this month of october we've been discussing the concept of emotional intelligence preparing us for the course that is upcoming and it is awesome this episode we are talking about emotional self-awareness emotional self-awareness and what we want to do is to give you a peek into what you can expect when you sign up for that course proving emotional intelligence for workplace policy when you sign up for it this is one of the topics that you will be experiencing and learning about so we'll be talking about what is emotion what is emotional self-awareness we will talk about what do we see in people who have this competency of emotional self-awareness what about those who lack it what do they show what are the symptoms or the behavior patterns that we see in people who lack emotional self-awareness and then we will look at how do you develop emotional self-awareness as an individual that wants to grow and wants to increase your emotional intelligence how do you grow the skill or this competency we know that emotion refers to that mental and physiological state that we often refer to as feelings that is what you feel inside of you and what we have come to experience is that every moment of our lives individually we go through a lot of emotions at the same time overlapping so it is not the case that you may be feeling one emotion at a particular time most of the time you have these emotions and you'll be processing all of them at the same time reaction to different circumstances at a given time now you, you want to notice that not only do we have emotions overlapping and blending but the fact is that there are hundreds of emotions that we experience each at a different level of intensity the way you feel it is different at different times or uh, different experiences bring different levels of the same emotion and that makes emotional awareness a difficult skill to master that is a difficult skill to master but it says that you can master it it's difficult it's not impossible it means that you can master it it's because look there are different levels and different emotions that we feel for instance tears of joy can you imagine someone is joyful and the, the expression of it is in tears you watch a football match and you, you the team that has lost is is shedding tears the team that has won is also shedding tears now how do you differentiate the winner from the loser tears of joy is one of such emotions that you you, you find people expressing something because a lot of emotions are running through their being and that is just one example now what is emotional self-awareness what is emotional self-awareness it's about you noticing and being able to label your feelings those emotions that are going on inside you that gut level instinct or reactions that you have your ability to identify it and label it put a name on it and say that this is what I am feeling. It shows that you are emotionally self-aware. You are able to connect these emotions or feelings to their source. 
they're able to connect that to their souls and you also recognize the effect of these emotions on your body on your behavior on the things that you do on your mind on, on your state of being how these emotions influence these aspects of your uh, personality you are able to connect them and able to see that this is the cause of this particular emotion. And if you are also able to use your feelings or emotions as a valuable source of insight, insight into your own self, information about yourself, because what you feel, uh, how you react to certain things gives you an indication of your being, who you are. Because as it is said in our local parlance, that which the dog sees and barks, the cat seeks, sees it and just blinks at it. The dog barks at it, the cat sees it and blinks at it. It means that people respond differently to the same circumstance. And that gives you an indication of who you are as an individual. If you are able to tell how you respond to situations, your emotions, to the surroundings and how your emotions play about with the changing circumstances of your life and, 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 and your surroundings that gives you an indication. And we say that if you are able to put a name on this, if you are able to tell their source, if you are able to tell the impact and effect of these emotions on your mind and on your body, on your behavior, then we say that you are emotionally self-aware. Or, in other words, that you have emotional self-awareness that gives you an indication of really who you are, all right? So, the more accurate you are, the more adept you are at discerning the force that is shaping your emotions and shaping your mood and, and shaping your mental state at every point in time, the greater your ability, you know, to manage your behavior. So if you are able to check your emotions, you are in a better state to also check your behavior or your response. We therefore are able to choose when we are able to detect our emotions and control them. We are able to choose constructive response to situations based on the possibilities that are available. You, you, you choose between options that are available because you know what is going on inside you and you have the ability, the skill to go inside and say that, this is anger that is boiling up inside of me. It is coming. And because the anger is coming, I choose to respond in this way or I choose to respond in that way. That gives me the choice, possibilities. Instead of me turning around and say that I'm just a victim of situations and circumstances, you know, people blame their behavior on situations and, and circumstances, forgetting that, see, you do have a choice. You, you do have a choice. So in other words, you, you need to respond with intelligence instead of impulse. You need to respond with intelligence instead of impulse. And the goal for you to respond rather than simply reacting. That is what we are talking about. That you are able to respond by choice. You choose how you respond instead of just reacting to the situations that you find yourself in. And, and what we want to see in us as we discuss emotional intelligence is, is that greater effectiveness and productivity and confidence in you and I. As we step out there, we have effectiveness showing forward, we have productivity showing forward, and we have confidence exuding out of us. And as you come to appreciate and understand your own emotions and, and your own behavior, you are also increasing your understanding for what drives the actions and behavior of the people around you. Your understanding of yourself helps you to understand other people. You, 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 you appreciate why people do the things they do better. Not to say you, you take whatever comes to you, but you understand where it is coming from. And then you choose an appropriate response 
to whatever behavior that you are seeing in the other person. So emotional intelligence, we are saying, helps you, that knowledge, that, that wisdom that comes from there, helps you to improve on your relationships and above all, your own happiness as an individual. So emotional intelligence is, is a key factor for enhancing the quality of our lives. If we are emotionally intelligent, the quality of our lives increases or it goes up. We, we, we are better human beings and people feel more comfortable. Now, let me share with you what shows in people's lives. If they so have this emotional self-awareness, if they have this competency or skill that we are referring to as emotional self-awareness. These individuals, they know which emotions they feel and why. You know, some people can tell what they feel, but those who have emotional self-awareness, they are able to tell the emotions that they are feeling and why they are feeling so. Number two, they realize the links between the feelings they have and what they think and what they do and what they say. They, they, they are able to connect it that when I feel hunger in my being, my thinking is sharper. Or when I feel hunger, my thinking is dull. You know, if you're able to tell and you have, you have to engage in a lot of thinking, then you know what to do. You see how it influences your behavior. Those who have this emotional self-awareness, they also recognize how their feelings affect their performance. The next point, they are able to articulate their feelings. They are able to express it. If they feel anger, they are able to express their anger and, and state it, you know, assertively and, and state it with all humility and all respect. But they are able to articulate the emotions. If they feel love, they are able to articulate it assertively with humility and with all respect. And, and they do this appropriately. They can also tell in the moment, in the actual moment where they are, they're able to tell, for instance, that, look, I am getting upset. The way things are going, <laughs> some things are boiling inside me and I'm getting upset. And, and, and they quickly do something to, you know, check what it is that. The moment they realize that, look, I'm getting upset, then they do something about it. Let's talk about people who lack emotional self-awareness. What shows inside them? Uh, what kind of behavior do they exhibit? Or what are the experiences that go on in an individual that lacks emotional self-awareness or one that is emotionally not self-aware? Now, the first thing is that they receive many messages from their bodies. Your, your body, your, your physical body, your physique will send you some signals or some messages when your emotions are not very well taken care of. You, you have chronic headaches. Your head aches. You, you have lower back pain. Sometimes there is neck or, or shoulder pain. And, and sometimes there is heart racing and pacing. You know, your heart beats faster than normal. You, you, some people have sweaty palms. It's a sign of lack of emotional self-awareness. And some also have anxiety attacks or other signals. The, the challenge is that people may be experiencing this, but they don't pay attention to these signals or they don't even connect the, them to their source wherever these signals are coming from. They don't take the time to check and be sure that this is coming from this aspect or this area and then they take the right measures and and that 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 is why you know <laughs> if they are not able to connect they're not able to know what is causing these physical symptoms and therefore they are not able to do anything about it another sign that we can see uh, or in people who lack emotional self-awareness is that they fail to gain insight and information from what their bodies might be trying to tell them. They, they don't check in and so they don't pick the signals and information that they are supposed to pick and then they get irritated 
<laughs> easily they get frustrated easily they get angry easily causing them to treat people around them in an abrasive way <laughs> in that fit of anger they are able to do things that you wonder whether this person considered the other people around them and and some of you are familiar with that famous dce the one that we call in ghana Shia dce and and the way he responded to that situation of a simple word that was uttered by someone you know that that irritation and, and frustration and anger it, it shows in people who are very very down there when it comes to emotional self-awareness they they also fail to see what they are doing or being asked to do <laughs> what they are to do when when they they are asked to do something they fail to understand it when they when they are asked to do something they fail to to understand what it is that they are being asked to do and and therefore might not be able to align their personal goals and values sometimes because they misplace what has been communicated to them they do other things and as they are supposed to do a and they are doing b you know that it's a mis placed priority when it comes to values they are, they are and goals and, and what it is that they are supposed to do they misplace these things because emotionally they are unstable they often feel stressed and out of balance in terms of their work life their health their family life they struggle they they, they have a lot of stress in in relationships so and these are signs and symptoms when you lack emotional self-awareness how do you develop this how do you develop this and and when you join our course this is what this will be the meat of it because that will be the the added on value that we are bringing to you how do you develop emotional self-awareness every one of those skills and competencies when we go into them we will talk about how do you develop it we won't just talk about the 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 the, 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 the positive aspect and the negative aspect and just leave it at that we will tell you these are the steps for those who want to develop number one for those who want to develop emotional self-awareness and you want to take note of these things number one is that they regularly check in on their feelings if you want to develop that you want to regularly check in on your feelings what am i feeling during the course of the day you want to find out schedule brief but frequent moments in the course of the day and and just do those check-ins on your emotional state what am i feeling in the morning in the afternoon mid-morning early afternoon late afternoon i'm checking in periodically and regularly the emotional state of my being and as well as what your body might be telling you you want to check in what is your body communicating to you because these are signals and information that could be valuable to you going forward so that is the first one number two how to develop it if you find yourself clenching your feet your your teeth and, and you have tensed shoulders as we described earlier and, and you're feeling worn out or worn down you just want to stop and ask yourself what your body is trying to tell you what is your body trying to tell you you know are, are, are you feeling stressed you want to check are you feeling anxious or or fearful or overwhelmed or or discouraged or burned out you want to check in and be able to tell that is number two when you feel that that sense of of tension and and shoulder that that weight on your shoulders you want to check and be sure what exactly is going on number three how to develop this emotional self-awareness name your emotions and name on them identify what you're feeling at every time that is why there is a list in that course we'll be going through there's the list of emotions and you want to know what each of these emotions mean and what they represent when someone is feeling this you should be able to put a name on them and connect them specifically to a source or a situation what is it that is bringing about this emotion or this state 
that I'm feeling currently? What concern is up? What issue is up that is causing this? That is number three. Number four, you know, listen to what your emotions might be telling you in that moment. You want to be sure what is being communicated to me by my emotions. Number five, developing this skill of emotional self-awareness use that information that comes up from inside you listen to your intuition to gain insight that could guide you in dealing with the issue or challenge that is at stake so you want to use that information it's valuable information if you don't use it it's, it's, it's not intelligence it's when you gather that information and you use it then it is intelligence for you. So whatever you are gathering from inside of you, you want to listen to that and you want to use that to deal with whatever situation that you are having to contend with. Number six, take the time to listen to that quiet inner voice. Have, have introspection. Listen to what is going on inside you. Put aside some of those goal-oriented activities of yours and really think about you. Think about your life. You know, check your life over a period and, and find out how is my life going. Take those long walks and, and know your core values. What are those things that hold you together? A friend of mine shared a story with me and, and it stuck with me. My, 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 my friend and brother Paul, he says that he, he has this guy that he buys socks for men from and he's at a particular joint when he's passing and driving by he just buys from the guy and because of that they become friends anytime he says hello whether he's buying or not and they have a short conversation and, and then he, he he goes on for a period he wasn't seeing the guy at the spot and and then he went in to to check later when he found him well, i have not been seeing you lately and the guy explained that oh i've been coming Maybe the time you pass by, maybe a time when I may have closed. When do you normally close? My friend asked him. And he says, oh, normally around 10 a.m. I've, I've closed. I've done the sales I want to do. And then I close for the day. Ah, So when you close at 10, uh, the rest of the day, what do you do? What do you use that time for? And this gentleman says that I go home and then I take time to think about my life. He takes time to think about his life. This is a street vendor. This is someone selling socks. And he takes time every day to think about his life. See, the point I'm making is that put aside some of those goal-oriented activities of yours and make time to think. Make time to think. Because that is where you gather a lot of information about yourself that is inside you. You don't need to depend on another person for that information because it's inside you. It's just that time to pause and to reflect and to go inside and find out what is it that is going on inside me. That is what will give you that valuable information, all right? So stop thinking of your emotions as irrelevant or, or messy or it, that is not important. Our emotions are an essential source of information for our life valuable information for our lives and that is why high card is coming your way with this powerful horse for you the proven emotional intelligence for workplace productivity the proven emotional intelligence for productivity it's a virtual course so if you are thinking about developing your emotional intelligence skills if you are thinking about developing the emotional intelligence skills of your team to help them in in customer relations and dealing with clients and and sales and those kinds of things you want to just sign them on this course and let them be part of this course it's a virtual course we are launching it on 25th of october and you want to just take this opportunity you don't want to miss it for all the rice in china yes we come your way and we provide this course for you take advantage share it with someone and let them also be part of it yes thank you very much for joining us on this episode we look forward to having you again in our next episode we will be doing an interview with a great man and you want to be part of this session as well until we meet again in the next episode it is bye bye from us take very good care of yourself and please share the video leave a comment 
How did it go for you? How did this episode go for you? What is the point that is resonating with you? What is that point that, you know, touched you and, and that point that you really liked? Which one didn't you like? Or even a question, put it there. We'll make time and respond to them. Until we meet again next time, yes, from us and the High Card team, we wish you all the best. Bye-bye.